thank you. Welcome back. What you just saw was the animation reel for the animation studio at Exceptional Minds. Exactly. We're here with Howie Hoffman from Exceptional Minds. He's the brilliant genius that helps to make all that possible. So, Howie, welcome. This is your first time on the show, which first is... First time on the show. That's ridiculous. I know. What were we thinking? We've been, we've been I, talking I, about um, it for years. I went to high school with Nancy. Yes, we a in little Richmond, bit before, Virginia. A little bit yeah. before. Which is crazy. And um, when I first met, uh, Ed Osner was our first spokesperson at Exceptional uh -huh. Minds. And Matt came with him. Matt, obviously, an autism yeah. leader in, in the L.A. community. And, and so I went up to Matt and I said, you know, my dad was a celebrity, too. And he said, who? And I said, well, Dr. Bobby. The pediatrician in Richmond, Virginia. He, in, and, and he in, got it. And he in got Richmond, it. he was a very well-known figure. In, in a well small town. A good, right. right, exactly. Right. So, um, so the, tell us a little bit about your background in art and animation and how you came to this role. My background was, uh, and there was a little bit of a contingent in, in animation in, in, in Richmond, Virginia. And I had... I had dropped out of medical school after four days. And I, I, that's <laughs> a true story. You, huh? and, it, and I want to get to Exceptional Minds, but what, what happened with me quickly was I was lucky enough to be at uh, a, a school, a medical college in Virginia, where the graduate school is known for its medical college and the undergraduate VCU is known for its art school and, mm -hmm. its, and its theater school, um, as you probably have heard of it from, yeah. from the theater aspect. And so I went immediately, long story short, I went immediately into art school and um, uh, did an animated film that, that got a lot of notice and whatnot. And I moved to New York. Um, uh, there was a gentleman from Richmond, Jim Jenkins, who 10 years later created the show Doug, but at that time was one of the first three or four people at Nickelodeon. And mm -hmm. he hired me to come to New York for the birth of Nickelodeon and then later the launch of MTV. Um, I was introduced to him by a girlfriend at the time in Richmond who became half the model for Patty Mayonnaise on Doug, oh, and I got God. the chance to design for Doug. So uh, I, I came out to L.A. after 20 years in New York to work for Warner Brothers Animation mm -hmm. and uh, for their commercial division, classic commercials. Uh, in the meantime, I had created Trix commercials. Uh, I'd done a lot of the, I guess I got known as an idea guy. Um, I'm not the creative genius behind that reel, though. It's the uh, it's the guys. It's 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 these people on the spectrum. People ask me who I work with, and I say, "Oh, talented and gifted," uh -huh. because that's pretty much it. Love that. And uh, we'll get to that. But I will say this while I'm thinking of it: if there's ever a, chi a time where I start to question somebody's diagnosis or prognosis, and and think, is that person on the spectrum? Um, I'll look usually look at them and look at their work and go, you know, they're that talented. They have, they have, they have to be. <laughs> what a great they're way really, of looking at it. It's it's true though. It's 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 so true. It's so purely true. So I came out here and um, uh, as a, as a result of an inner ear injury, I was sort of out of the loop that I had been in uh, the so-called big time, although I consider now to be the big time. What I do now. And, uh, and so on my way back up, I, I, I met a gentleman who was starting an after-school special, excuse me, an after-school program um, for uh, kids on the spectrum for movie making and, mm -hmm. and including animation. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because there were a lot of special needs kids there, but as soon as we started animation, the whole clientele became one with autism. Mm -hmm. So there's a real connection that I'd like to discuss. Uh, between autism and animation, but that's basically that's basically my background. I got to be known somehow as an idea guy, and um, I went with it in New York, and I went with it in LA. And uh, I do like structuring creative thought, and um, like all of us, like you said in the earlier part of the show, uh, the apple, like about parents, yes. you know, mm -hmm. uh, having Puppies some qualities of, of the spectrum. <laughs> all artists are obsessive. Mm -hmm. and, and um, probably have uh, attention deficit and uh, I'm likely no exception and people tell me how creative mm -hmm. I am but it's really I just I obsess on it I don't let an idea go until I work it out mm -hmm. until I solve it mm -hmm. and that's but, what makes these guys great 
But I was going to say, that's what makes you an incredible teacher and leader for these individuals because you understand that process. You understand some of the difficulties. And I think you're incredibly modest because your (laughs) earlier life has helped you to pave roads for your students, that you have all these connections that some of the people that are in places now at studios are people who you helped to bring up. There, yeah, there, uh, there's some people that, um, I don't know if I helped, but I encouraged at the very least and, and uh, who have come around to help us. And, I, um, and, and we're really grateful for that. I'm, I'm always attracted to talent. And that's, that's why I'm, I'm inspired by the, this group of students and this group of our studio artists that I work with. And uh, it, it's, it's no less than inspiring. So I've always been attracted to talent. I've always sought it out. And I've always taught as an avocation. Mm-hmm. I went back to visit my summer camp in Maine on a vacation from Saatchi and Saatchi in 1985, or the agency that became Saatchi and Saatchi. And I, at this sports camp, Camp Androscoggin in, in Wayne, Maine, I made animated shorts with, these, with the jocks for about two weeks. And I marched back. I came, went back to Nickelodeon, and I went with Fred Seibert, and we marched into Nickelodeon and said, "Your network is four years old. You know me. You're a kids' network. Why aren't your station IDs made by kids?" Mm-hmm. And they said, "How the heck do we do that?" <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great idea. How do we do that? And I said, "Hire me." So next sum, for the next 18 summers, at the expense of my career and the, and the envy of every major executive. I went back and we made animated shorts for Disney Channel, for PBS, a show called Zoom. We made um, uh, uh, Nickelodeon, of course, and um, and Kids WB, Warner Brothers Animation. When I moved out here, I left there to go back this summer. So I used to um, have people like Rob Sorcher, who who heads up Cartoon Network Creative now. He's head of the network, basically, and he uh, has helped uh, with money and with uh, an upcoming project. He has really helped Exceptional Mind Studio. He helped launch it with an initial uh, initial funding. And uh, he used to say to me, how do you how do you get to go to camp every summer? <laughs> and, and I'd say, I'd say, well, Rob, I'm not head of AMC like you are. Right. And so uh, that that became so teaching was an avocation. I started with a in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, near where Amy is, uh, uh-huh. and I started with a government grant under the Jimmy Carter administration, mm-hmm. later removed, but we won't go there, uh, <laughs> to teach animation in the public school system of, uh, of, of Williamsburg, Virginia for wow. five months, and, and uh, that was great, and my star, my star kid I later met up with in New York, he walked into a studio, and I said, you look familiar. He said, it's me, Nash Dunnigan. <laughs> and Nash Dunnigan became the art director of the Peanuts movie that came out a couple wow. of years ago. So he came to Exceptional so you've Minds. you've had a lot time. of illustrious students. So, yeah. So my line is I know everybody, and some of them like me. And, <laughs> and, uh, I love that. And Hollywood out here in L.A., I think it's pretty good. But, and that translates to the studio. Talk to us a little bit about the studio uh, and absolutely. what happens there. Exceptional Minds is a three-year vocational school, and now... Um, in essence, a fourth year because we have an apprenticeship program in both of our visual effects studio and our animation studio. So the visual the visual effects studio is five years old, mm-hmm. about five years old, and it's um, they do work. They do visual effects and in credits for for movies like recently Star Wars, Black Panther, the new Avengers, and. It's it's amazing. They get work. The model is they get a lot of work that would normally go to India. Mm-hmm. So Marvel or Disney, they do get good PR out of it. It's win-win for everybody. And our guys get to work on franchises they grew up with and they idolize. Mm-hmm. And they get to see at least exceptional my name, but often uh, their names yeah. in, in, the, in the credits, besides the fact that they're putting those credits together often. Mm-hmm. So we, we do marker removal, and they do stuff with green screen. It's, ama- I, it's a tradition now in our family. We go to see a movie, especially if it's a Marvel movie, and we sit. We mm-hmm. always wait for the credits anyway, right? Because that's, so nice. that's an L.A. thing to do. But we wait, and when we see Exceptional Minds, we applaud. <laughs> and we just, we, we're like, there oh, it is! Yeah, so yeah. we love that. But anyway, I interrupted. No, you. no, 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 no. We that we love that, and and I, I think that's one of the greatest things about it. So uh, visual effects is it, it's it's hard work, and uh, besides the connection to animation and and those cartoon souls like me, 
that are students. There are those that are really meant for visual effects and that. So that's about five years old. The animation studio, the reel which you just saw, mm -hmm. that is just coming up on two years. And uh, the executive producer of the visual effects studio, Susie Zwerman, is also executive producer and head of the animation studio as well. I am the creative director and I direct a lot of, the, of what we bring in. And part of my job is to bring stuff in mm -hmm. from these friends, the few that like me, I hope. And, <laughs> and, um, uh, and, and we have uh, John, our producer, and Scott, another director. And then right now we have four to six um, graduates mm -hmm. that are in the studios. And then this year, with our graduating class, we have four going into visual effects and six coming into the, into the animation mm -hmm. studio. Mm -hmm. And, and you've uh, had some pretty big projects. Yeah, we've had definitely. some great projects, Nancy. We we did. Um, we have projects that are commercial, literally, uh, like for a Rube Goldberg toy for Spin Master ad agency. Mm -hmm. We had um, my brainstorming partner for many years was Virginia Beach's B.J. Liederman, NPR composer. So we did a music video, which you saw a little bit of there for 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 B.J. And then we've gotten to do stuff with the community, which is uh, really. It, and I think this. I think the graduates like working. The studio artists like working on that, um, as close to home as it is. But we did a project, a big project for Special Olympics, and not on this reel because I can't show you yet. Is is the um, animated sequence we just did for Atypical for the network mm -hmm. show? Atypical. Love it. So in liking talent, I went to the screening. I met Rabia. I met Michelle Dean. Um, and even and they're though, fabulous. Yeah, they are. <laughs> even though she's a Channel Islands. Uh, professor in special ed, yeah. uh, she's like you are in the sense that uh, she has a background in casting and the way yeah. you have a theater and, yeah. and whatnot. So the other, pro so we have gotten to do both projects that are more commercial oriented and, mm -hmm. and, and for the studio, and uh, we have a ways to go, but not not very far. For these guys, the object is this, you know, um, we're all about. I, I just said yesterday to somebody, we're putting the EM in employment. That's the goal. Um, uh, that's why I get paid the big bucks for silly lines. Like that. <laughs> um, I love it. And uh, so we, our, our goal is, in, in, in essence, um, our goal is to get, to, to have a, a life for these guys. And right. in order to have a life, you have to make, have you a have livelihood. Have, and have a so whether yeah. you're going to go to, um, we have internships at Cartoon Network, we have internships uh, annual internship at Nickelodeon, Warner Brothers. We have job placed at, at Cartoon Network, and um, uh, in visual effects, we have uh, people working at Stargate, at, at Barnstorm, at um, Marvel and Disney. Mm -hmm. And then, for me, there are a lot of people that um, are meant for our studio, and right. I want our studio, our animation studio, to be as big or as great, at least, as fun, as nurturing, or even more nurturing than any other studio. And so that's the goal. I, I, and we've had a good start for two years, and and um, as you, as I think you'll you've seen on the reel. I've yeah. got a question for you though about stress. That the movie industry can be a pretty stressful place, and there are deadlines, and there are things, and it's very demanding. How do you help the students to mitigate that? They get used to the stress. I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a great question. Um, we have a really good job readiness program. And they spend one day a week pretty much focusing on just that. So they get practice f with interviews. They get practice with all that. Um, for some, I mean, it's stressful for anybody. <laughs> For all of us, it's stressful. The deadline pressure, the social part, and that's why I want the option, a viable option of a studio uh, that's nurturing and that's, um, but it's, it's interesting. There's so many good, as, as far as animation world goes, there's so many gentle spirits in animation. And as you know, in the entertainment industry from having Garth here yesterday, uh, that, a lot of these studios, like Cartoon Network, are very nurturing. And Nickelodeon has a, um, a relationship with Burbank High School, besides us, uh, where they um, uh, they have Carson Smith there has a whole uh, community outreach program at Nickelodeon, and they 
they went to pitch to Burbank High School a few years ago, and this one person who never said anything got up to pitch his show and blew everybody away. And he, he was on the spectrum, of course. Right, right. So they took him as an intern, and now they've taken him you know, as, as a job. And, wow. and when they reminded, when they reminded uh, the head of Nickelodeon at the time that he had autism, the head of Nickelodeon said 75% of people that work here are likely <laughs> yeah, on the spectrum. Right. So I think it's a good field for that, for, for, for support for the stress. But again, that's why we have the option of a studio there. And I would hope that some that are able to handle the stress and take and go out to other uh, studios will even come back and, and lead in our studios. And so we have, to me, it's what the kid wants. And uh, it's all about what the kid wants. They may think they want to be somewhere else and then decide they want to be with us and vice versa. Now, before so. they come into Exceptional Minds, do they have to have an aptitude for animation and have proven and worked in that field, or do you sort of introduce some of these kids? In, in terms it? of the program, because employment's uh, the mission and the goal, uh, in, in some ways we've gotten more and more high-functioning, but we have accommodations. We have a, an extensions program, mm -hmm. and we uh, so yeah, they, they do have to have... Some of them are coming from other colleges, already okay. from other colleges. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they need more more training and more time. I mean, you know, I didn't move to Nickelodeon. <laughs> I was waiting tables at Tobacco right. Company Restaurant, right. Right. you know, in Richmond. I, I didn't move to Nickelodeon until almost 30. Um, so I, I guess it took me a while as well. So it's it, that's a great question as well. We have an extensions program. So if you're if you're over 18 mm -hmm. and you have um, and you're not really either you want to pre prepare get prepared for the full time program or you don't want to be in the full-time program, but you just make want to make content, mm -hmm. or you're, you know, they're free during the day. So we, have, we now allow for those if, if they're more impacted, perhaps, mm -hmm. or maybe they're just different kind of goal. Right. You know, I have a, a student from Huntington Beach who's come a day a week for five years now, and he's a savant. He's, a, he's maybe the best animator I've ever directed. So we have extension programs for, for you know, those that aren't in the full-time program or want to be. Mm -hmm. But yes, the aptitude needs to be there. I always used to think before we became a, a vocational school when I was working with the younger, it was more about do you want to be there? And mm -hmm. that's, a big, that's a big thing here. Mm -hmm. And I would say do you like art and do you like computers? Because mm -hmm. if you like that and you're, you know, um, I'd like to address with that question it, it's it's uncanny, but there's a there is a connection between autism and animation, mm -hmm. and everybody knows, and you're familiar with this too, as as Reed's mom, I'm sure that there is an aptitude for art mm -hmm. and for creative mm -hmm. and writing stories and all that, but it's just coming in with exceptional minds. I think we're bringing the attention to there is a real connection between these two art forms. And I, I've been wondering why, <laughs> and, uh, and discovering in, in really wonderful ways why. So one of it is they, they seem to love cartoons. Uh, everybody does as kids, right. I imagine. Um, I did, but not any more than most kids. I mm -hmm. was in the commercials, which is why I later went into that. But they seem to love cartoons. Some that stay ha continue to have a very young sensibility, mm -hmm. and they will like Thomas the Tank, and they, right. will they will love Sesame Street, although everybody does. And the others will, you know, allow me to be hip by teaching me about certain game things mm -hmm. or, or, or certain, certain shows. Um, but there seems to be a genuine love of cartoons. Our producer, John Clark, says that's why he's there, because he absolutely loves cartoons. So I consider them cartoon souls like me. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that many of them have a great visual memory. Mm. It, just like Spectrum Lab works with a lot of people that have a great audio memory. Mm -hmm. um, they have a great visual memory. And um, it's almost photographic in a lot of cases. I was working with a student teaching him to animate on, on digital, uh, on animate, which used to be mm -hmm. called Flash. And he was doing stick figure of a guy running without a guy that I would normally use. Mm -hmm. And he would look up into his head and not only was he recalling somebody running, but he was breaking it up into frame by frame. Mm. Wow. I, I mean, it's, un, it's uncanny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're not all savants, but they all have a, uh, a tendency towards 
sequence. Mm -hmm. Some of them are good editors. Uh, and, and those that can't draw, some of them are good photographers or good art directors, but um, or good just good good storytellers. Mm -hmm. And so there's also a perseverance, you know, their attention to detail. Yeah. And if they're into it, and this is what helps the visual effects guys, but they will just continue to work on it until they get it right. Mm -hmm. And visual effects is a little bit more perfection oriented. The what I like about the the, the animation studio, the cartoon studio, and doing cartoons is, uh, it's a way to celebrate the imperfection of this, of this mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. And there's charm and there's money in that too. So um, I asked why, you know, they're, I don't know your experience, but they, they, they say that a lot of people on the spectrum have trouble reading people's expressions, mm -hmm. whether you're mad at them or sad mm -hmm. or whatever. And yet, they are great when it comes to animating them. Huh? Interesting. So I finally just asked Michael Yoakum in our studio, why? Why is that so? And he said, in ha Howie, in, in animation, the expressions are exaggerated. Mm -hmm. wow. They're easy to read. I've often heard that the reason that a lot of our kids like Thomas the Tank Engine is because the faces are easy to read on the trains. Wow. That's right. Yeah. Atticus Baldwin, my friend, he, uh, he loves it. And part of the reason is his Uncle Alec narrated it for a while but right. I think I think you're right yeah. and it's colorful and uh, and it's got and they're exaggerated and big and they can really see the expressions that's right yeah. it's amazing we're running out of time okay. and I want to talk just briefly about the fact that you you mentioned that there is the vocational school and the studio but you also do camps can we talk just a little bit about camps this summer we do do camps uh, we do summer workshops they call okay. it I call it camps having been a camp person thank you for reminding me I did want to talk about that. Um, we have four two-week sessions. I brought the form, but not into the studio, of course. And they each last two weeks. Okay. And we have them in everything. We have a thing. We have Saturday uh, programs now on Saturdays regularly for 12 years and older. And we have after-school programs for if you're in high school and you get out in the afternoon with mm -hmm. a one-on-one -on -one private lessons. So this is sort of an extension of that. You have... Uh, uh, Cartoon time, which is beginning flash, beginning animate, and then they have a more advanced animate. They have digital painting, they have Photoshop, they have beginning visual effects, um, and so uh, a range of things. It's it's and it's from ten to three, so you still have a little bit of the afternoon, mm -hmm. and it's it's loose but wonderful. Every every person that comes goes home with their own little movie of sorts. Right. Sometimes we take those little movies, I used to do this, and put it into one big film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, I think I've been long-winded enough. So how <laughs> can, no, it's all fascinating. Yeah. How can they contact you about um, any I, of the programs? I, and I didn't bring a graphic for this. I think, um, I'll tell you what, I'll give everybody <laughs> my email to start with. Okay. But um, uh, you can contact me at Howie, H-O-W-I-E, uh -huh. at Exceptional Minds Studio. So that's okay. E X C E P T I O N A L, Minds, plural, M I N D S, another S for studio, mm -hmm. singular, dot org. Okay. Or if you want to know about the summer program, you can contact Jill at Exceptional Minds Studio dot org. Uh, and you can contact Jill. You, she may have killed me for saying that, so you may be able to contact her. We've got the website her. up on, oh, the, you do. on yeah, the lower third. Right. Right. Exceptional yeah. Minds well, a, a good thing, if you're interested in the summer, is to go to the website. There's an intake form there. Fill that out, and then you can call Jill there at the number go. listed. Right. That's probably That's the probably best the way to go. That's probably the easiest, because you'll be inundated with calls. Yeah. Uh, amazing. So, and any age group for, I know you 12 and older for 12 the and older. Okay. Summers. And 12 and older in general, in the sense that summer, uh, we have week, uh, Saturday classes for 12. Okay. okay. And then the vocational program is 18 and over. And the, yeah, the 18 and older is, is for the extensions program, right? Okay. If you're not, if you want to prepare for the full time or if you're not interested in the full time, you just want to make content and, uh, or you want to uh, market your content. Mm -hmm. even or even you know we work with content development as mm -hmm. well we pitch shows and things like that as well it's remarkable 